The first mechanistic stop along that way is going to be how to form a new functional group we call acetals. And what's characteristic of an acetal is that if you have a carbonyl and then you do some, I'll explain the reagents in a second, but if you do the right chemistry, if you look at that same carbonyl, you will actually have put on two ethers in a sense. So kind of what you do is you're going to need two, put in parentheses, two, two, of an e, uh, two alcohols that turn into those two ethers. You're going to need an acid catalyzed environment, right? This does not work in basic environments, only acid. And it's going to be written explicitly sometimes, but you'll sometimes see minus water. And that's going to be the thermodynamic tie-in I mentioned in the last video, but you'll see it at the end. It'll make some more sense if I can show you all the reactants versus all the products and why minus water is kind of an important step in the mechanism. Okay, so now, like I promised you, here's the point where you will get sick of every single time starting off a mechanism by protonating the carbonyl oxygen. Okay, so let's do it. Let's protonate the carbonyl oxygen. I'll draw my hydronium. This electronegative carbon is going to grab H+. Those electrons will go back on the oxygen right there, making water. So we now have our activated, protonated carbonyl. And I'll kind of just put plus water up here. Okay, what's our next step? Well, now that we've activated our carbonyl, our less reactive nucleophile can do his job. Let's bring in our methanol. He's going to now come in and attack this carbonyl. That's now a little more activated. Electrons swing up. Okay, so now if I draw the result of this electron flow, right, I'm going to draw this now OH off to the left. I'm now going to draw the group I just added, the uh, now ether, to the right. Right, I got O, he's bonded to an H, and I got a CH3 down here and the oxygen has a positive charge. Okay, so remember, in our product, we don't see any OHs whatsoever. We only see the evidence of two methanol groups being added. So we need to kind of get rid of him, but, and we also want him to stick around. And I said this in the last video, things you want to get rid of, you protonate. You make them better leaving groups. Things you want to stick around, you deprotonate them, because that makes them less able to be a good leaving group. So let's protonate this uh, OH right here. I'm going to draw hydronium right here in a little bit of a ratchet way. We'll protonate him. Electrons go back to the oxygen. And I'm going to have water instead come in to deprotonate. I'm going to deprotonate um, this oxygen right here in the ether. Some people will write on this arrow, you see how we're adding H plus right here to this OH and we're taking away H plus over here on the OCH3. Some people on an arrow will write plus H plus, minus H plus. So if you see it, that's what that means. It's a little bit of a proton shuffle. Okay, so let's see what that does for us. Now we have water right here, right? Because we protonated the, o, the alcohol to water. We now have OCH3. Okay, so he's ready to leave. He just kind of needs someone to give him a little bit of a shove, right? And here's how we're going to do that. I'm going to have two electrons from the ether come down and form a double bond, and now we're going to kick off water, right? And here's this minus water step. And to give you a sneak peek of why that's important, it's going to help out with the entropy of this reaction, right? We need good entropy means you start with a few reactants and you end up with more products, more disorder. That's where this helps out. Anyways, now what we're left with is this type of thing right here. We have you know, a double bond to the oxygen and the CH3. Kind of looks like the protonated carbonyl in the beginning, right? Well, if you can kind of use the same logic, we're going to take another methanol and we're going to attack because if we drew resonance, this carbon right here still has a positive charge. So let's come in and attack, kick the electrons up. The result of that electron flow would look a little like this. I'll put the OCH3 that was there before to the left. I'll put this newly added OCH3 with the hydrogen off to the right. You can see we're super close to our product, right? Super close. All I'm going to do is have the water we kicked off here come by. We're going to pick up this H plus. 
I'll swing those electrons down on the oxygen. I'll draw an arrow down to show you the products. So you can see we formed the acetal, right? We have our two ethers on that one carbon that was initially the carbonyl carbon. We have recovered our catalytic acid that we started out in the beginning, and that is the forward mechanism of acetal formation. Not hard, right? It's just a bunch of different steps. It's a couple of attacks, a couple of proton transfers, and that's really it, right? Protonate the carbonyl in the beginning. That activates it, bring in our less than reactive nucleophile who can now do his job, attack, protonate the group you want to leave, deprotonate the group you want to stay, swing down, reform a double bond, kick off the group you don't want. That helps with the entropy of this reaction with uh, the water leaving. Attack again with another group, and then clean your product up. Okay, nothing too intense, but if you, if you feel a little overwhelmed, if you practice this a bunch, you'll get excellent at it. All right, let me erase this, and then we'll do the reverse mechanism. Okay, gang, so unlike in the forward mechanism where we take water away and helps drive the reaction forward, if we're gonna do the reverse reaction, if we're gonna start with our acetal, right, and go back to the carbonyl, we actually have to add water in. This is a like plus, we're gonna add water back in, and that's going to you know, drive away the acetal and recover our carbonyl. So let's just get right into it. Okay, so remember, in the last part of this video, I said you wanna protonate groups you want to kind of go away, to get kicked off. So we don't see any evidence of these OCH3 groups in our carbonyl, obviously. So we're definitely gonna to need to protonate them a little bit. So let's start out with some good old hydronium. And I'm just gonna go and protonate the, car, or the OCH3 on the right. Right? So what that's gonna do is gonna give him a positive charge, right? He looks a little bit more like the methanol and that we started with in the beginning, right? Okay, so we kind of need him to leave. What's his driving force for kind of getting out? What we're gonna do is we're gonna take an electron pair on the other ether, swing those puppies down, and that is going to be enough motivation for this guy to kick off to leave as methanol. And that is going to leave us with this carbonyl looking intermediate, right? But it's not exactly a carbonyl because we have a CH3 group there. All right, so what do we do next? This carbon is still ready for nucleophilic attack, still very activated. Well, let's put on a group that we want to see at the end. Let's actually bring in our water and have him swoop in and attack the carbonyl carbon, which means we need to kick up these electrons. Okay, so I'll draw the result of that electron flow over here. So I now have my OCH3 to the left, and I have my water I just added over to the right. Okay, this is very much like that proton shuffle step that I told you about in the last section of the video. We need to deprotonate this guy, this group, and we need to protonate this group because we want the CH3O to leave, we want the water to stick around and be our carbonyl. So let's protonate him, deprotonate him. I'll bring in another water. He's going to be the one to pick up this H and deprotonate the water over there. I'm then going to bring over some hydronium, draw it in a little bit of a ratchet way for some space. I'll grab H plus over here, and then we'll have the electrons dump off on that water, that oxygen atom. Okay, so what does that help us do? We now have an OH to the right, deprotonated the water, and now we have a protonated oxygen that looks a lot like methanol. Whoa, a little messy. Right, this is what we got going on. So remember, his motivation for leaving is gonna be this electron pair swinging down and kicking him off. That's the result of that electron flow. We reformed a double bond, just have to clean up that proton, and we're done. So let's just get some water, have him grab that H, Electrons dump off on the oxygen. I'll draw an arrow down. And we have our carbonyl. And you guessed it, the acid that catalyzed the whole thing. Okay, so this is 2A and 2B on the big mechanism worksheet. And I think there's a 3A, 3B that is 
deals with acetal formation, but the, the groups you attack with are a little different. I'm gonna let you guys figure that out. But you can see it isn't hard, right? This isn't that bad. It's, att it's protonation attacking, protonate one group, deprotonate another group, reform a double bond to kick off a group. It really comes down to that. But please, please, please do me and you a favor. Practice, practice, practice. Okay, in the next video, we're gonna talk about forming a different group involving nitrogen called an imine. See you then.